So last week I made a video about this prawn star named Mia Khalifa, and that video got a pretty good amount of views, so let's niche down a little bit, let's try it again. This video is about somebody called... Riley Reed. Who that is, Riley Reed with my booty fat. Uh, ooh, you've also definitely heard of this person. Come on, male-centric audience. Let's be honest here. Uh, let's just put it this way. If Mia Khalifa were an asshole, which she is, Riley Reed is a piece of shit. Now, I'm gonna leave it at there and let Riley Reed speak for herself, so let's see what she has to say. Why am I calling you a piece of shit, Riley Reed? Jacob. Hi, Riley. My name is Jake, and I'm 18 years old, but I'm a virgin. I want to lose my virginity, but I'm too nervous to approach the topic with my girlfriend. My girlfriend is one of those girls who's like an A-plus student, and in her senior year of high school, I think she's going to focus on her grades more than me. I just really need your help on this, but if you do not, if you do, not do a blog on it, I would love to get a response at least. Thanks, Jake. Okay, Jake. Well, that's a tough one because you may be ready to lose your virginity, but maybe your partner isn't, and you should never pressure anyone to do something that they don't want to do. Um, that goes with saying, when I lost my virginity, I had a, a guy said no three times, and I still hopped on it, so you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> um, Did you just admit to raping somebody? Hmm. Interesting. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Riley Reed. okay? At least she's willing to talk openly about it, right? <laughs> and the fact that she feels comfortable enough to admit to something like that is kind of a reflection of society and people's values, hmm? I mean, how many men on a public platform would be willing, people who are known in whatever it is that they do, would be willing to admit that they somebody when they were younger? I mean, your self-awareness, does that really nullify it? Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can try to make a move on your girlfriend, but if she rejects you, just know, just go in knowing, you know, everything that you go, if you go in to ask a question, you, you have to always know that there's either a yes or a no. So you have to be ready for the no, because it's a possible option. Don't have... Don't have your mind set on her saying yes, you know, so. Take it from Miss Puffy Nipples. Hell, 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 hell yes. <laughs> yeah, gender double standards. Damn, it's a load right there. Now, what is it? What is it that um specifically made, that, what was the instance that what she's referring to, right? Well, let's take more of what she said about it because she's willing to talk about this shit openly because... How would you face any consequences over this if, like, society doesn't deem you to be a valid enough threat to be considered uh, capable of doing something like this to other people? Not to say that everyone who says it this way, because there's a lot of people who find stupid-ass rationalization. We'll get to comments like that. But it's not just the fact that people usually think that you're incapable of doing that to a dude, but it's also sort of just like, oh, they're a dude. He's fine. He liked it. Yeah, if he didn't like it, why, why else didn't he have an erection, right? Because it's not like your body can just react to stimulus despite whether or not you want to feel a certain way about it. What did she say? So she tweeted in 2012, I just remember my freshman year of high school. My nickname was Screamer, lol, heart. Lost my virginity. Funny story, I raped a kid in a movie theater because I wanted to fuck and he kept saying no. That's how I lost it. Hmm. Could you give me a little bit more information? Because me as a Western patriarchal male who usually when you bring up this stuff a lot of women are just like well it's men it's the the values that men have created that make it so that men victimize each other so therefore it's also your fault and that's a good way for me to take back my my to prevent me applying from any sympathy to, to, to what you've been through so what does she say here it was the first time you ever had sex what was it like oh my virginity this is a fun story all righty so I've been dating my 14-year-old boyfriend at the time, British kid named Clark. While I was 15, two weeks of shy of 16, he had been dating for about, or we had been dating for about four months. I'd say we hit it off. I mean, I was already giving him blowjobs. He was finger banging me and would dry hump each other all the time. I was so horny for this kid, I couldn't control myself. Well, like our usual practice, we would go to the mall and catch an afternoon movie and really, and a really lame hoping it was empty because this was our hookup spot. The mall in general. Behind AC unit vents, at the movies, in the grass, anywhere I could stick his cock in my mouth, I would. I'm telling you, horny. 
makes set 14 million. Wow. Well, every time you kiss your mom, I guess you suck your dad's dick. <laughs> well, she's kind of reinf she's kind of a uh... Her ideas towards this are pretty much reaffirmed in society, given that she's rewarded for it. So we catch, go to catch this movie. I really couldn't tell you what movie it is, but it was pretty close to empty with maybe three people in the theater. I was already blowing him and jerking him awfully. He had been teasing me when I asked him if I can just get on. I really didn't even think about it tw twice about it. I wanted his dick. He, on the other hand, didn't want to lose his virginity in the movies and said no, that we should wait. I was still jerking him off and asked him again and again, remain, remained to his first decision, leaving me rejected again. I really couldn't stand it and still playing with his boner. I asked him at a third time, hope he'd give me in, give in, but standing his ground, he denied me. Well, I guess in my book, no means yes, because his boner didn't turn me down. I guess in my book. Is that how you rationalize it? Because this is you describing it years later. Oh, because he had a boner. I guess that means he wanted it, right? You hear that? You hear that, gentlemen? If a woman's wearing certain clothes, that means she's asking for it. I mean, why else would she be wearing that clothes? Those clothes, right? Why else would a guy have a boner? Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. Good job, Riley. Placed myself in cowgirl on his lap and slide his cock right inside me. He didn't push me off and it was great. I needed his boner and forced him down upon myself. I guess you could say I'm aggressive. Sorry, not sorry, Clark. And she feels no remorse. Very nice. You know you loved it. Great. <laughs> we continued to date and have sex for about six months in all kinds of places. Like, of course, snuck him through the window into my room at the local part of the baseball dig out, dig, dugout. Every alley, the front yard of my parents' house. Anywhere we got the chance. Man. Wow. The fact that you can openly speak so openly about this really speaks volumes about. Because it's not just the fact that she's speaking about it. It's the fact that, like, there's been nothing that happened as a result of it. Right? Who gives a shit? She's a female. Yeah, men are, are the violent aggressors. I like that. People just don't take it seriously if you're a woman. Like, it's weird. Like, there's all these standards that are applied to women as if, like, they're inferior, they're incapable, they're, they're, they need to be treated like they're children. And people follow through with that. Yet, like, a lot of feminist values, especially in the Western world, like, try to, like, perceivably... They try to make themselves come off as if they care about egalitarianism, when in all reality, they just don't... They just want even less... They want less accountability. Don't believe me? Here's this article I found by the psychologist, Sophia G. Enes, Department of Psychology at Keene University. It's a, it's a article or a study or a paper called Female Sex Offenders Double Standard. On page 8, here's something that really stood out to me. Police training seems to solely revolve around males as perpetrators of sex crimes, leading to the disbelief when accusations of a female as being the cause of the sex crime has been brought to them. This plays well into the cultural denial and influence on the criminal justice system. The Center for Sex Offending Management confirms this by stating specifically the research revealed that police officers reacted with disbelief to allegations involving women, minimized the seriousness of the reports viewed of the female suspects as less dangerous and harmful, and were prone toward labeling the cases as unfounded Founded. And then they cite a source. Victims can easily report a male of sex crimes since it's much more believable and cultural influences make it much easier for males to be convicted of sex crimes. But females are much more difficult. Yeah. Um, so not only is Riley Ruder, she openly admits it, is willing to talk about it, and doesn't really have any remorse for it. Nor And they also find justifications as to why they did it. So, yeah. Um... Humans are disgusting animals, and you're welcome for this information.